Welcome to the Sam View community, everybody. <laughs> Everyone's welcome here, that's for sure. Welcome to Wellness Wednesday. I'm Andrew Carruthers, Education Director for Sam View. We have such a brilliant show coming up for you, so hold on tight. We are going to go through just a quick couple announcements first. Um, I know that you know you guys probably got all your sales on already, but just in case you do still need some tools, don't forget we do have our Cyber Monday deals going on till December 4th. And coming up this Monday, another show must go on. This is number seven. So this Monday, December 7th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern, we've got Sammy cutting hair. We have Braden Pelletier, Redkin artist and founder of Just Be Hair Salon. We've got Jamie DeGracia, who is an incredible hairdresser, so great with short hair, and she's a wall creative consultant. And I don't know, I might even do some hair too. I guess. But we are going to be raising money for the PBA Disaster Relief Fund. So please come. Please give as much as you can because we know that hairdressers are hurting out there and this is a great way to support them. There is still an opportunity for you to get virtually hands-on with Sammy. Ruth Roach is going to be in the house on this class. You go to redkinpro.com backslash education. That's December 6th, 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern. And you know what's kind of cool? If you sign up for that class, you could potentially win a $500 share package from us. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. I would want to go to that class. Anyway, that's what we got coming up. And of course, we still have a whole week of great education coming for you next week. Um, more details to come on that. So I wasted enough time blabbing. It's time to introduce our guest. This man is not only a great hairdresser, a great hairdressing teacher, but he is an entrepreneur. He is a brilliant speaker. He has trained hundreds of artists on how to be better educators, teachers, speakers, artists. So please, everyone, type into the chat, welcome your reach. Hello, my friend. Wow, how, how, you know what, Andrew? I need to take you everywhere I go to introduce me because you make me sound so fabulous. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good hype man, dude. <laughs> I love it. And you know something else too? I just want to say this really quickly. Um, as I was watching, you know the you know the real play of mm -hmm. Sam, and I just wanted to t let you know, like really in truth, like really what an honor and a privilege it is. I was just telling my girlfriend, you know, while we're watching, she's being introduced to uh, our amazing industry and community, you know, with yeah. me now that she moved in with me during quarantine. Separate oh. story. Perhaps we'll come up with that. Yeah. Um, but what's so interesting is I told her, I was like, wow, you know, and this dude, he's really the real deal, you know, and 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 he's such a humble man. And and you are such an amazing artist and, and team member. And, and the things that you're doing, Andrew, it's just so exciting. And to be on a show. Um, with you, uh, you know, having a conversation with you and first Sam V is, it's just like, it's astounding. Just thank you, my man. I so appreciate it, brother. Really. Well, thank we're, you. We're, we're so, so happy to have you thank here. You, and I mean, guys, come on. Do you not already feel the love from this man? <laughs> come on. Such a great spirit. So, thank you, Andrew. Yurish. Yes. Today, I'm so excited for you to talk to us because this is such an interesting concept to me. The title of today and the concept that we want to get into is uh -huh. that the absence of one resource often creates an abundance of another. Absolutely. So yeah. when, you shot, when you shot that concept over, tell us a bit about what, what was your thought process with that concept? Listen, you know, something that's been happening throughout this whole entire experience for each and every single one of us, you know, is that um, something that we were used to, um, a resource, uh, could have been a connection. And this is what was so interesting about it and, and, and what brought it top to mind. And I've been actually thinking about it a lot um, and really um, seeing how this could serve other people because it's a different way of looking at things, to be honest with you. And um, I'm noticing in private life, you know, um, in business life, there was things that were, were taken away from us temporarily, right? Whether yeah. we could connect with family, whether we could connect with friends, connect with clients, um, run our businesses, you know, the way we used to, right? Because let's say yeah. that, right? Because yes, yes. we're definitely getting involved in, and, and I do like to call it the new better, right? Because yeah. I'm, I'm not much one to look back, you know? I, I like to look back only 
um, for reference so that I can remember uh, maybe some of the struggles and some of the uh, challenges that I've experienced in the past and, and that I've overcome them to give me um, strength and a resilience to keep on moving forward through current struggles. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right? But when I'm looking at this is I was like, wow, there was a moment, if I can, and I'm, I'm kind of a little bit of a storyteller, so I'm gonna kick you off with a little it's, story. No, it, it's actually one of my favorite things <laughs> about listening to you speak is you tell the best stories, you have the best metaphors. Awesome. And another thing, guys, this guy comes up with the most amazing facts about random stuff. It is <laughs> awesome. So yeah, true. strap in. Yeah, saddle up. I'm coming at you. You know what I mean, right? So here, right? So I'm, 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 I'm with my family. It was maybe in August. And we're outside, you know, in, in, in the home that is a family home of ours. My mom, we were just chatting about it, where my mom grew up, where I spent my summers and my holidays, not in Hell's Kitchen, New York City, but in Connecticut, you know, where my mom grew up and where my grandma Sophie was. Anybody who may know me has definitely heard stories about grandma Sophie. Um, and I'm back there and I'm, I'm flipping, I'm, I'm on the grill. I'm also a cook. If the whole hair thing doesn't work out, just be aware, it's going to be like, stay your reach. That's my next thing. But anyway, right? So I'm cooking. And my father is like, you know, I'm so sick of um, this COVID thing. You know, when am I going to be able to get out there again and do what I do? Now, let me be clear on this. My father, he's a jazz musician. So mm. similar to all of us, just in a different way, this is what was so profound. He's struggling because he's not able to connect with audiences the way he he usually does, right? And he's struggling mm. with how to be productive and how to still create within this environment. And I stopped there for a second and I thought, and I looked at my dad and I said, you know what, dad? I want to bring something to your attention. If this happened in 2019, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Why? Last year, I traveled 44 weekends out of the year. Wow. I did something like 63 programs on the road. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, and this is a rough one to say, and this is why I'm, I'm kind of like coming out the gate, you know, hitting a little bit hard in the sense that I didn't have work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But what I did have in the absence of work, an abundance of time. Yeah. And this was the very first time I started thinking about what this idea meant. Because while well, please, I mean, let me not let me not minimize the role of revenue, right? Because you know, bills keep coming, you know, whether sure. whether we're in revenue or not. So that's a real a real a real thing too, you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. in the in that regard, I, I, I found it was a moment where I, I I I all of a sudden was like, wow, let me let me not ignore this blessing. Because um and this is a Thing that I truly believe, and this is for me and for anybody out there, please let us know in the chat. Let, let, let us hear it. You know, I found that some of the biggest struggles in my life actually haven't been with what's going on. The biggest struggles in my life has been my acceptance of what's going on. Really different. And mm -hmm. when I say acceptance, it's not to like sit there passively and accept, but it's like right. this is what's happening. And what else? And yeah. then I started extrapolating this into my personal life. And wow, there's been so much abundance in my personal life in the absence of one resource. Frankly, um, as you mentioned in, in my role as an entrepreneur, I, I have my own education website as well. You know, you mm -hmm. reach style, right? And I have to tell you, this is twofold. One, I was forward thinking and, and thank God for it. You know, I started developing the website prior to quarantine, right? But I have to tell you, I was running multiple races. I was on the road all the time. I'm still, I'm still a master stylist and director of education at Broom Street Society, where I work behind the chair because I do do that. And then, right, so there's all this happening. So when is this website going to happen? Abundance of time. Yeah. And that was able to happen. And then in that moment, then I move into um, what I do for L'Oreal Professional Products Division, right? What is that? How does that show up? Then all of a sudden we start pivoting and we see that this digital medium, and please, this is so important and it's something that I truly believe. We're still in the season where we're not able to fully go out there and connect through education. Please, I, I, I watched your reel. It's like, I know Sam, I know you. I know that's where the heart, it's like, please sure. let be in front of me. You know what I mean? That's our dream. And I saw that, wow, what an amazing tool this digital education can be. And then I started working on the Solana Motion and pivoting that into digital. And what can we do with here digital? And how can I still serve teams digitally and join 
their Zoom so that I could support the teams that I made relationships with when I was on the road. Right. And while their teams are struggling, I could I could join them in their um, team meetings and be a source of inspiration there. Wow, never did that before. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. And then and then I look at what I could do at the Broom Street Society where I'm the where I'm the director of education. I kept teaching. I was shooting videos and I was doing weekly workshops with all my students. And 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 these were all super gifts because they stretched me to grow. You know, I mean honestly, man, I'm 48. Uh, you know, this computer stuff, you know, I mean, I, I, I grew up, there wasn't even answering machines, brother. You know what I'm saying? I so, get you. My forte, you know, so I, honestly, if not pushed, perhaps I might not have implemented as much. Perhaps I might not have taken the time to learn as much. I can't speak to that. But I know that with this push, it pushed me to grow in new, exciting, um, challenging ways that are, I, I truly believe. That again, it's not a this or that, it's a this and that. Yeah. Live education will come back. Andrew, fear not. You will be connecting with people again <laughs> in person. Yeah. So will Sam. So will I. Yeah, and absolutely. What an and, and I think that that's yeah, what's really sorry, key yeah. too. No, I, I just want to mm -hmm. kind of connect to what you're saying. because right. That's what's so key is recognizing that acceptance of what is happening mm. is not necessarily an approval of that in a dismissal of something else. No. Like it, I love how you put that. It's an and. And so we can be accepting of our experience and recognize the blessings of that experience without necessarily giving approval to COVID. Because I think that's what a lot of people are kind of sensitive about. It's like, well, how dare you say that there's blessings during this time when there's all these terrible things? Well, recognizing blessings does not approve the cause of the blessings. But the other thing that you mentioned that is also really important, people don't change until something big happens. Mm. And that in and of itself is an adolescent, Yurish, that maybe we need to be a little bit more open to these changes before we're kind of forced to because you know we we had kind of done the same thing we had set up a lot of digital education before before yeah. COVID, so we were really prepared for this you were ready thing. you were ready but, and if dude, you stay ready you don't have to get ready andrew yeah and that's one thing to to keep in top of mind there, you know, there's been many conversations with yeah. the Thambia team that it's yeah. like, thank God that we had invested so much into digital education at this point because we were so ready. But, you know, Sam and I both still kind of had to figure out more of this kind of stuff. Like, OK, how do you how do you run this show through this backstage stream yard thing where you're posting up comments and doing all that kind of stuff? Yeah, banners. You and know, I don't know that yeah. we would have done that had all this stuff not happened. So if, if you guys are kind of feeling what he's saying too, please in the comments, you know, let us know how, how has this been a kind of, well, yeah, this went away, but there was a blessing in that space as well. Please add that to the comments. We'd love to see it. Absolutely. And, and, and something, if I may too, Andrew, please. just so for everybody out there that's listening and, and, and just so that they're aware I'm, I'm always show up with, with a servant's heart. I don't show up as a lecturer, right? Sure. I have a lot to share, but just be aware that like, please comment, please participate, you know, please let me know what's going on so that I could speak to that as, as well. Do you know what I mean? Because that's what I'm here for, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I think that's important. So please hit me with the comments. I want to this to be more of a conversation than you reach lecture series for certain, right? Yeah. Um, something, uh, something that you brought up that I think is really important. The only way, listen, life throws challenges. That's life, right? Yeah. That that's, it is what it is, right? It's like we're having one. What is what is it they say? Um, your reward for your current challenge is your next challenge. I, I'm <laughs> something like that, you know, right? That that's really the gig, right? Sure. So, I share that in the sense of, and it's really important, and I love the way you anchored that, and I just almost need to repeat it and and expand a little bit on it, is like, no, I'm not just like, you know, skipping through tulips. So we're clear. I've had some rough days with this. This has sure. been a difficult conversation. You know, um, I've definitely had to use a lot of the practices that um, I've used in my life extra, you know, so that mm -hmm. I can... I can really be right with this and move forward. And, and the thing that I think is really important 
is um, one, there's opportunity everywhere. The only issue is whether we can see it. Two, if if we if we wall if we stay in what we can't do, we'll never be able to see what we can do. Mm-hmm. And and it's a it's a mind shift. And it's never, please, it's never ignoring what's taken place. And and if I I'm gonna be super straightforward here, and just so I'm addressing this, like people lost businesses, people yeah. lost jobs, people, people lost people, do you know, because people people have died because of this so Mm -hmm. to minimize any of that just so we're super super clear and amidst all of that do you know we we all still have to find a way in my opinion to not just survive but but to thrive and and the only way we can thrive is to acknowledge what's taking place got it i see it do you know what i mean i I don't want to ignore that got it and Can I see a positive thing that I could do um, in addition or, or, or instead of staying in what I can't do? You know what I'm saying? Yes, for that, sure. Trust me. And, and that's why I just said it. It's like, oh, easy. Not easy. Total practice every day. Some days I'm better at it than others. For real. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. again, this is why when you asked me about like what I want to talk about, I was like this in many respects, because as Sam himself taught me at one point, um, you teach what you need to learn the most. And this is something that is so relevant for all of us right now. I would be remiss in not mentioning something like this that was so important to my being able to move forward through this and stay productive and, and always have an anchor of positivity, even if I fell off of it a little bit. This was something that really helped me um, move through quite a bit. So that's where I'm coming from with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and thanks for clarifying that too, because I think, you know, like I, I watch your Instagram and your social and stuff and you're pretty honest, but you know, you definitely do have this very uplifting kind of forward focused, like let's move forward here. Let's, let's be positive. But I think it's important to know that the people that are saying these things, they're going through the shit too, you know, but they're choosing to, they're choosing to look at it in a different way. And um, Tara, actually, this is such a great quote from Wayne Dyer. Change yeah, yeah, right. you look at things and the things you look at will change. And it's so true. It's like we're yeah. all kind of going through the same experiences, but all of you have friends that their experience is very different just simply because of the way that they um, work with it or the, the things that they do to manage it. And you know, I want to want to just bring up a couple because we got a, quite a few comments here. Your ish, um, hey. Baby Bell said one of the blessings of of this time, and she got in, in touch with her inner self that she didn't even know existed that it needed to reach. So many blessings along this time. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Just Please. briefly, if I could just connect with Katie. Katie, first of all, thank you so much for sharing that. Secondly, that is a true blessing, and I share it in this respect. And these are things that, in a sense. Again, I don't like to live in the past, but I will access it for 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 strength moving forward. Mm-hmm. Don't forget this, Katie, because the truth of the matter is when things pick up and then the business picks up and then the clients pick up and it's all going to be amazing and the revenue's going to be coming in. Da, 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 don't lose yourself again. Ooh. You know, your your eyes have been open and and the thing is what's so beautiful about that is once they've been open, it's really hard to close them again. You know, but in the busyness of life, we 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 can, you know. So really, remember that because you're able to serve all of the people you serve because of the fact that you're in touch with yourself, right? Yeah. So I'm sorry, I just really that one just hit me right off the gate, Andrew. I had to address. You know, thank you so much for that share, Katie. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Jane's saying she's a new stylist um, since just the beginning of this year, and she's actually grown so much during all of this, which to her point, that is actually kind of interesting because at first I would think, oh, well, if you're a new stylist during this time, you probably haven't been able to get into the salon as much. But yet again, it's probably because Jane chose to do something with her time. She chose to show up on the digital platforms and grab her mannequin head. She chose to actually find the abundance in the lack of something else. Because so, again, we go back to that choice. Resource, 
abundance of another. Yes. Do you know? So how 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 can you develop your brand? How can you develop your marketing? Those are all things that actually, if you're jamming behind the chair from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and give me a holler back if anybody out there knows what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. right? That's something actually you tend not to have time to do. Right. You know, what an amazing opportunity to be able to grow your business and put energy into that as opposed to just only, and, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but we can get lost in practicing the craft and forget about the growth of the business. And, and in yeah. many respects, they're connected, but they can also be expanded into two separate real houses as well. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's amazing, Jane. Thank you. Yeah. And Heidi actually even got online sales going, which again, yeah, if you were just behind the chair 40, 50 hours a week, like normal, you probably wouldn't have created an online sales funnel. And this exactly. now you have something that can continue to be profitable, even when you are full force in the salon again. So cool. Into the future, Andrew. Mm -hmm. There's some things that are really funny during all of this. I did do one uh, trip. It was totally hilarious. I wound up doing one education trip. It was a total blessing. I did it uh, for Kara Stas and Shu. Uh, it was in Vegas. I actually had to quarantine when I got back for 14 days because, of course, two days before I went, it went on the quarantine list. Long story. Well, anyway, yeah. what was so interesting uh, about, about that moment is I'm in the bathroom, right? And I left and I was laughing. I was like, wow, never seen so many people wash their hands in an airport bathroom in my life. And why <laughs> am I sharing this? I'm sharing this because... There's clearly some things that we have discovered during this experience that we've discovered them now and should continue into the future when this moment has passed. Do you know, and, and that's a funny example, but I love it. Because that's going to be an amazing tool for you and your business moving forward. What an anchor. What an amazing opportunity that you, you saw and stepped into. Yeah. Yes. It's important. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I've noticed quite a few comments from people that, you know, the time did give them time to uh, focus on some haircutting skills. And one of the things that Jesse Linares, he's one of our art team members, Please. one of the things that Jesse always says that I think is such a perfect quote is that we don't practice our craft behind the chair. <laughs> so you have to actually make time to practice because when when we're in the salon when we're working with our with our guests that isn't the time that you're going to try out some new technique that sammy showed you on a show must go on you know basically you're just kind of like getting stuff done at that point you're talking about their family you're talking about like the next service all that kind of stuff so you don't necessarily practice hair when you're in the salon with a guest so this again gave us that opportunity to step back and go, oh, yeah, actually sitting at home with a mannequin, watching a video or something like that, or dedicating specific time in my life to practicing. And again, hopefully it'll be face to face soon. But that, that's something that we have to make time for. And what you're saying, Rish, is make sure that can continues. Because I think there's been so many lessons that people have experienced we we had um oh my gosh Shannon Shannon King and his wife Allison on quite a few weeks ago yeah yeah and they were talking about some of the great things that had actually happened in the salon because they were forced to slow down yeah. you know they were doing the uh, they were doing the um the digital um, consultations and they said that their retail had actually gone through the roof because there was this dedicated time, or dedicated space that was almost more comfortable to have that conversation of like, oh, so let's talk about what's going on with your hair. Let's talk about what products will help you with that. The things that sometimes we forget to do. So it's all of these things that we've, you know, we've had these great lessons. And it's so important, Yurish, that like you're saying, make sure you don't drop those off as we kind of get back into that high pace or that flow that we were at before. Absolutely. And uh, uh, a great mentor of, of mine, and I, I know you know this gentleman, uh, Johnny Stellato. Oh, yeah. There's a big, and he, I remember, like, there's a difference between showtime and practice time, mm -hmm. right? It's like, don't confuse the two. Yes. You know? and, 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 and to your point, Andrew, and, and this is the thing, and if I may, the main thing that, 
I'll never forget in all of this, and along with the time, and along with you know the practice time versus show time, along with all of these lessons that we've learned, and and how we can keep building our businesses. It's like when you get busy behind the chair, when you get busier behind the chair, mm -hmm. you know, um, don't don't drop off with that because you know we got to keep growing, you know, and that's something that you've learned now. So maybe now make a new type of a routine, a, a new type of schedule for yourself so that you have dedicated time for these things. Yeah. Uh, again, one of the things that we're given the gift of is, is once you see something, I said it before, it bears repeating, once you see something, you can't unsee it. And when you do see something grow like that and you see what it can do, uh, you got to keep that going. And then that just adjusts your path and adjusts the way, oh, wow, I didn't know that I could do this. Let me make sure I make time to incorporate it in the future because I can see how it will continue to serve me and my growth and, quite frankly, my fulfillment in my work and in my life. You know, to do clients, to get revenue, book back to back, it's an amazing feeling. You're connecting with clients after clients, and it's amazing. We love our clients. Yes. And we love the revenue. Yes. And the other thing that we can never uh, ignore as creative people, which we all are right, is to make sure that we don't forego that curiosity and that, and that discovery of new things, you know, and this has given us this, this amazing opportunity to discover and delve into so many things that perhaps we didn't have the opportunity to do before, but let's not forget that, um, that fire that you're feeling in your belly as you're discovering a new thing or you're working a new uh, marketing strategy or you're working on a new haircutting technique. It's, it's, it's the gift of creation and the gift of learning that's actually fueling you in that moment. Don't forget yeah. that, you know, cause that's your ace in the hole moving forward. That's, that's the excitement and that, and, and that excitement, that's a, a self-propelling uh, engine behind business, no matter what industry you're in actually. Because oh, sure. that, that, that attitude is contagious, you know, for sure. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Michelle just hit the nail on the head too with this comment. Is there really any other way we have to look at 2020 as an opportunity to change and learn to adapt to whatever is thrown at us as open eyes to not live in fear and to actually become closer to people. And I'm glad that she mentioned this because this was actually going to be something I was going to ask you kind of is almost like a trick question please but how okay. is isolation <laughs> yes yeah how is isolation actually where have you found abundance within relationships with within that kind of more isolated lifestyle that's interesting i've got two two i've got two stories for you actually you mm -hmm. can catch me off guard andrew i'm ready for you you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> check this out one during this, interestingly enough, right, so I, I had been in a long-distance relationship with my girlfriend for three years, actually. She lived in Laguna Beach, and I lived in Manhattan. I saw her four days out of every month for three years. Mm -hmm. Crazy us, we decided to uh, have her move into in with me in New York City on, I think, March 20th, the mm -hmm. day before shutdown. Now, I got to tell you, fortunately, good move. We love each other's company and actually our relationship has gotten only stronger. Nobody, it's like, it has not gone in the other direction, which was like, well, blessing number one. Number two, I was thinking again about 2019. I'm mm -hmm. gone every weekend. I'm home maybe four days a week. We were able to really integrate this space together. That wouldn't have been something that would have happened. That's a closeness that took place because of this current circumstance. Right. So while, while no, I wasn't happy that I wasn't earning revenue for three months, but I was happy to be engaged in that. Right. That's story one. Two, um, I have uh, my home, my home slice, my brother, Carlo Novoa. Right. People on here, hopefully some of you know, if you don't peep him, he's an incredible human being on many levels. Incredible colors. Incredible he'll, he'll actually be back on this show in two weeks and there you go. a couple it. months ago. So peep it. It will be worth catching. And I share this because we've been tight for over a decade. Guess who just decided to start having virtual dinners once a week? My brother Carlo and myself. It would have never occurred to us to do that prior to this. One could successfully argue, I've talked to him that more now in quarantine than I did when actually you could go whenever the hell you want. So again, 
it's not about minimizing the situation, but it's about looking at that situation, honoring what that situation is, and moving through it and seeing what you can do within it. There's always room to maneuver. You just need to find it. You need to find that flow. You need to find your path so, so, so that you can grab those moments. And, and I share this too because honestly, a lot of and, and yeah, I had I had business growth, like all these stories about people with their with their retail things that they're doing, everything that's been shared is so incredible. Yeah. But sometimes as driven professionals, which which so many of us are, you know, we forget that there's something that is of equal, if not arguably more value than any revenue will ever earn. And and that's a connection with our families, with our loved ones. You know, and this was yeah. an incredible opportunity for that. You know, and and, and um, I think that's something that we shouldn't forget, you know, because I speak for myself in 2019, I might have seen my parents four times. That won't be the way I'll yeah. be continuing from now on. Do you know, again, now it's like consciousness. It's like you're getting, they're getting older. Fortunately, they're super healthy. Please, they'll probably outlive me at this point, but I'm just in case, Do you know, right? But I got to take advantage of this time. Yeah. You know, time's our most valuable gift. That's the truth. It's our most valuable resource. You know, once it's once it's gone, you can't get it back. And 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 you always have a chance to earn more revenue. You'll never have a chance to earn more time. I guess I'll just leave it. I'll just say that. Do you so know, true. And I, that was kind of a mic drop, actually. When I yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there you have that, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and to that point, like. I've definitely talked to family members more often this year because like you, I wasn't on the road quite as often as you, but usually twice a month. Mm -hmm. Definitely spend more time just out in the front yard having a beer with friends. Like, you know, when it was still nice out, it's getting kind of cold up here. So we haven't done it as often, but, <laughs> but you know, we get our lawn chairs yeah, yeah. set up and we, yeah. you know, sit outside and just hang out and do nothing. And yeah. before, you know, we would have come inside and we would have had a completely different experience. So even the relationship that we have and how we get together has changed. Like we we were talking, we had Thanksgiving outside. It was 34 degrees outside and we were bundled up and we had tables kind of spread out and we had some like space heaters and stuff above us. But it was a great Thanksgiving. You know, and we stood around a fire for a while afterwards and drank some wine. It was a completely different experience and it made it super special. Like it make, made it something that we won't forget. And yeah. man, that, that wouldn't have happened. No way would that have happened Ever. if 2020 hadn't gone the way it had. Absolutely. I just got to give a shout out. I just saw in the comments, man. Love you too, Carlo. I see you up there. Thank you for, thank you for peeping it, brother. Definitely, man. And, and. I think what's so interesting with what you just said is, I mean, it's moments like this that actually propel us to innovative thought. Yes. You know, to, to you had alluded to this earlier and now I'm going to bring it back, you know, is honestly when change is forced upon us, we have a couple of different options, right? It's, it's actually pretty much, uh, you know, um, uh, flight, fight, or freeze, actually, is kind mm -hmm. of what it really kind of boils down to. And mm -hmm. uh, the fight is the innovation, right? You can't flee a situation like this. So, okay, that's out, right? So you can freeze, yep. right? Um, and you could also fight. And when we're forced into change, we're given an amazing opportunity to look at things in a way that we haven't seen them before. And when we are given that opportunity, when we see things differently, we're able to come up with new and inventive solutions. And those solutions can seem like something of the moment, if that makes sense. Uh, like I'm forgetting the amazing artist who just talked about, and you shared their comment about how they developed all this online retail and it's like yeah. business. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm forgetting the name. Please let me honor that. But thank you so much for that share. And I share this because that can seem like initially it's like I'm saving my business. This is a thing of the moment. It's like, wait a minute. I've discovered something. 
And it's something that now I can expound on, I can build upon, I can grow with. And now with that new type of insight and that new type of um, vantage point, yeah. I get to look at a, a, a familiar problem and come up with um, an outside of the box type of solution. And and I've got to tell you that like those type of solutions are the ones that tend to hit the most yeah. and tend to have the most long lasting value, do you know, because they're the decisions that allow you or invite you. I won't say allow you. I will say invite you. You're always able, whether you do it or not is an issue. So let me adjust that verbiage, invite you. Um, to show up and come up with something that's truly innovative. Yeah. When I, things I, are going the way they are, we tend to stick with what works. Right. Right? Yes. And then we wind up ultimately kind of doing what everybody else is doing. And the, I'm not mad at it. If it's working, it's great. You know what I mean? And it has for many people for a very long time. But to really knock it out of the park, to, to pet, pave your own path, is to come up with something that's truly um, original and innovative. Um, yeah. It's moments like this that actually send you that invitation. Yeah. And the, in, and there was a quote one time, and I, I have no idea who said it or where I even heard it, but just as you were speaking, it reminded me of this thing that I heard one time about when a choice is reduced, creativity goes up. And that's exactly in kind of the same thing. It's like, okay, well, our choice to do things the way that we've always done them was removed from us. So what had to come to the forefront is innovation, like you're saying. Absolutely. Or yeah, you have the option too of yeah, retreating. Yeah. And I'm and and so I can be transparent and super clear. There have been plenty of days in this entire process where I have totally retreated for a day or two oh, on my yeah. sofa with Netflix. Let me just be super clear. I just yes. like every day is like, Oh, it's a new day. And I'm oh, let's go. It's like, no, nothing shameful about. about that at all. You know what I mean? I just want to be super clear, do you know, because it's so important, you know, and, and Andrew, thank you so much for pointing that out. And that's why I do strive to always um, come from a place of authenticity and honesty, because the last thing I would ever want to do is act like, like, every day is a sunny day in Eurasia's wonderland. And like, I'm not living the same life everybody else's. Do you know the, the, the thing that I like, that I feel my purpose is to share is that even amidst that there's, there's ways out of it, mm -hmm. do you know? And the more we practice those ways, the quicker those ways will come to us when the next challenge arises. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like a muscle. It's just a muscle. The first time it's like, oh my God, take me two months. Next time, a couple of weeks. Next time, a couple of days. And, and it's always that, right? With my grandma Sophie. Oh, here's a grandma Sophie. My grandma Sophie always told me, she says that life isn't about how many times do you succeed. Life is actually about how many times you get, and I'm, I'm, I hope this is okay on, on the channel. You get knocked on your ass and you get back up. Yeah. In an extension, my grandma Sophie always had, you know, a little bit. She gave you, she, she, she always took it to 11. She didn't leave it at 10. You know what I'm saying? And she says, Yurish, the truth of the matter is never, never wallow in the bad times and never stay stuck in the good. Both of them will come to an end. And that has been really profound for me. Because when things are good, yeah, I celebrate, but I don't live in it because another challenge is happening or life happens and it's not catastrophic. That's just life. That's how we grow. You know what I mean? So it's okay. But when things are going smooth, I celebrate that moment, but I'm also, I don't stay there. I don't get, um, what's the word? Um, I don't get blinded to the way life works. Right. right. We're like, everything should always be working for me. No, it's not true, actually. And when things aren't going my way, I'm like, okay, just keep plotting through it because this too will, this too will end and I'll see that up. And that's the hills and valleys of life. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And how we navigate them creatively, innovatively and resourcefully is, is how we always, uh, we stay thriving and not surviving. And I think that's so important for all of us to keep in our minds. 
I'm not interested in me. I'm not interested in you. I'm not interested in Sam. I'm not interested in any person on this that's present for this event to be surviving. I'm only interested in each and every single one of us through this time into the future to be thriving. And it's all the mindset. It's not what you'll yeah. do with your hands. It's what you do with your head and your heart that'll have that happen. Yeah. Yeah. And so speak to that, Yurish. Like, how how do you keep your mindset moving in that direction? Because let's face it, if you watch the news every day, that that's is not what they're telling you to do. That's, that's point one. I don't do that. <laughs> that's issue number one. Do okay. you know what I mean? And I stay informed, but I can't drown in that. It's too much noise, right? And if I stay looking at ne negativity, I'll never create anything. Do you know? And that's really important for us to always remember. Do you know? Again, I don't want to sit around walking through with rose colored glasses, uninformed about what's going on. I consider myself to be actually super informed, actually, right? Um, but, but, and, I don't want to like drown in it, do you know, because then that happens. So that's number one. Number two, I'm um, something that I make a very big practice. I've been doing this for years. When I wake up, I set my intention for the day. My phone does not. I do not pick up that for social media, for emails. I want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it until, as my brother Carlo Novoa says, I check in with me. Yeah. That's the first thing, because either the outside world is going to affect the way I view things or either I will affect the way I deal with the outside world. That's the difference in that. So for me, my practice is I definitely meditate every morning. I definitely uh, make sure, even through this, I got those bands so that I could continue working out because mm -hmm. I believe that change your body, you change your mind. 100%. You know, right? Uh, and this is, uh, here's pro tip right out the gate. For real, for real. If, if you're feeling really down and one of those things about shifting that mindset and the, the paradox is that the last thing you ever want to do when you're feeling down is move your body. If you can stay present enough to this reality in that moment and just get up and grab something and move some, I don't care if it's a walk. I don't care if it's a run, grab your dog, go for a walk. I like, don't, it doesn't have to be like pumping iron or nothing. Just move. You will shift your mind state. It changes the chemistry in your mind and all these various different things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, before you reach out, reach within. You know it, Carlo. Exactly. And I'll say this, too. And I think that this is so, so very important, you know, for, for all of us um, to know this, too, is I'm going to be a little bit vulnerable. I'm going to share this with you. And this is why I've come to this. This is practices from a long time. I've actually dealt with, I've struggled with depression for a lot of my life, actually. So, and I've figured out a lot of different ways to address it because I, I fortunately, and I say this with a lot of um, consciousness and intention, because some people don't have this choice, I fortunately did. My issue wasn't so severe that I literally had to take um, things that would shift my brain chemistry, right? I did initially so that I could learn the skills that would allow me to move through it. Mm. Right. A lot of them had to do with reflection, meditation. A lot of them had to do with, as Carlos said, checking within before I look without. A lot of them have to do with um, positive reframing techniques, you know, so that I could really look at the situation for the truth. Andrew, that, that's the honest truth, actually. Yeah. Do you know, when you catastrophize and everything is going to crap, it's like, actually, that's really not true. It's not true for any of us. To, to be honest, and, and that I actually will say as a blanket statement, nothing is 100% crap for anyone on this planet. There's something in it for everyone, and literally, and I know, and I say that, and I do say that consciously and with intention, because some people's journey is really hard. I, I was studying to be a substance abuse counselor. I'm a, I have a credential to be a substance abuse counselor. I was dealing with some very challenging situations, and you, but there's something. There's something that we can grab onto. There's there's a North Star or a light somewhere, somewhere. And I know it can be hard to find it. I know it can be hard to see it, but it's there. And if we can really focus on ourselves, if we can focus on the way we're seeing things, if we can focus on our body moving, if we can focus on trying to reframe things so that we, we don't just see what we can't do, but we look at a situation and look for what we can do, Good for you, Autumn Rose. Congratulations. Love that. Yeah. And I think it's so important for us to utilize um, those techniques. And, and they work. Andrew, I'm giving you life techniques. These aren't like 
hairstylist techniques. That's for no. sure. Do you know? Because no. no one is, I won't say no one. I will say that our industry is probably one of few that touches so many to the gr- degree that we do. Right. And, and, con- and consequently we are affected so much because so many people um, share their stories with us and we're in a privileged position to hear them. So I'm not saying shut that out and shut up Francine. I'm not saying any of that. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like, sometimes no. you need to tell Francine to shut up. I mean, Stop let's be honest. Right. You know what I'm saying? Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's keep it real. And, I also recognize that as an honored, privileged position that actually Francine is apparently trusting me with crap that probably she ain't yeah. telling a lot of people, right? That's a privileged position. Totally. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a hard one because we take on a lot. And if we don't make time for us, and if I may, I think that's the bottom line. Make time for you and make time for what's important to you beyond revenue so mm-hmm. that you not only have a successful career, but a fulfilling life. Um, I, I believe um, Tony Robbins said said something like this, and it was such it's such a um, I think it's so important. Um, one of the greatest failures in life is to achieve success without fulfillment. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One of my most miserable times in my career was actually when I was one of the busiest behind the chair. Yeah. Because I was getting lost in the what I forgot, like the why. <laughs> You know what I'm my, saying? My most my most yeah. profitable year in my entire life was probably one of the hardest years of my entire life. Yes, yeah. Not, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade that paycheck for <sighs> my peace ever again. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a, it's a powerful lesson to learn. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's a powerful and it's even more powerful to remember it. Yeah. I right. share a lot like one of the things that my wife Michelle and I we've we've done this for, for a long time but it it would get interrupted pretty often but we have this bit of a ritual where we sit in the mornings and have our coffee mm-hmm. and if it's 5 minutes 15 minutes sometimes it turns into 45 minutes if it's really beautiful outside or something we just kind of sit and sip our coffee yeah. and I'll tell you man like that is something that I refuse to ever give up again it seems like such a simple thing, but at this point, because I've felt how different my day starts, just like you were saying, give yourself a gift to set the intention of the day, not have this thing set the intention of your day. And that was, that's such an important piece. And I think, you know, the, the message of like, oh, you gotta rise and grind and like all these different things that come up. It's like, I'm sorry, but all that sets you up for is stress. And And I guess if you want to, if you just want to have a stressful life with a lot of money, and maybe that is what makes some people happy. I I won't judge if that's what you, if that's what truly in your heart brings you peacefulness and happiness, then God bless you. But most of the people I know, I think, you know, that's not, that's not the truth. Yeah. Cause usually, and this is another one. I, 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 I forget who said this one, but, um, you show me your stress, I'll show you your fear. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You know, that's the truth. You know, a um, couple of things I see, uh, Tara, I think a lot of it is taking 100% responsibility for what happens to you in your life, not saying bad things that happen to you are all your fault, but accepting you are in control and, Tara, dead right, and yeah. um, to realize that the things that are happening, they aren't happening to you, they're happening for you. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that in my life, and this is me, and I, and perhaps this is me, and may, I'll keep it in the eye, maybe other people can relate. To be honest with you, some of my hardest times in my life, you know, flash forward 10 years later, they were absolutely transformative. Yeah. And uh, I wouldn't have discovered or been able to grow to the extent that I did um, had that not happened. You know, it's unfortunate that that's very murky while it's taking place. Do you know what I'm saying? But it's also the true. And uh, I also wanted to honor Oscar Lopez. I'm exhausted from this pandemic. Yeah. We feel Uh, you. I hear you. Me too. Me Mm -hmm. too. Me too. Do you know? And I just wanted to honor that because I don't want you to think that I'm not. And and I think that you express it for many people. And, Mm -hmm. um, and, And I think that when it comes down to it, um, that's something that, again, 
um, to honor that exhaustion and to give it its due, to honor that you're tired from it, to honor that this has been a very difficult experience. And then get up, look within, and see how you can move forward. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. As we all stay about, with that for a second, Yurish, because I think this is a really important please. part of this message. Please. That, you know, because I know for me, let's speak for me, mm -hmm. when I get to that point of exhaustion, it cycles. Because what happens is, because I do so much work, like I, you know, I do have an hour, I have a 90 minute yoga practice. I've got another half an hour meditation practice. I've got time that I sit on the couch with my wife, you know, I, I'm doing the things. <laughs> yeah. And then I find myself like, in a state where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. I'm depressed. And then, then I get frustrated with myself. Like, well, why are you letting this get you down? Like pick yourself back up. So just kind of speak to why it's so important to also give us this, give ourselves the space to be like, okay, I, I'm, I'm upset right now or I'm exhausted. Uh, why, why it's so important. From, from, from my perspective, yeah? Why it's so important. Um, you, you can't ignore things like that. You can put them off. If you don't honor that exhaustion, it will show up later and mm -hmm. usually in a much more um, consequential way, right? To yeah. honor these things as you move through them. It's like, if you feel like crap, great. You feel like crap. Don't live in it but honor it. Do you know, there's this, uh, there's a principle, actually, my girlfriend uh, turned me on to it. It's a 24 hour rule. It's like, if you feel bad, great. Give yourself 24 hours. Feel, feel like total crap. Great. You know, I feel sad. I feel depressed. I feel powerless. I feel exhausted. I feel, whatever. Fine. You know, and after 24 hours, after you've truly felt that emotion, after you've truly honored what that is, now it's time to start doing the work, doing the practices mm -hmm. so that you can start to move out of it. And it is a process. It's not like that, do you know, or at least I haven't mastered it to that point. Perhaps somebody has, I'm open to it, but I find that it's a process and it's a conscious one. Right. And that's why you give everything. It's you give everything respect, right? If you're exhausted, that, that demands respect. If you're feeling depressed, what, I'm just going to act like I'm not. It's like, no, honor it. Mm -hmm. And then it's time to, after a certain point, be like, okay, like what's going on? Why is this happening? Is this something I can move through myself? Do I need to talk to someone? It's, and it, it's all okay. There's, there's no wrong in that and in serving yourself and doing what you need to do for, for your betterment and, and your higher being. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But without that honoring, again, you know, it, it's, it's that thing. It's like if you keep ignoring it, you keep fixing the wrong problem, mm -hmm. right? And you'll yes. see it show up and you'll be like, why the hell is this happening? And why is this happening? And why is this happening? And it's like, it actually, if you trace that back, it all starts with the thing that you didn't acknowledge. Do you know? It's, mm -hmm. it's that voice. It's those moments. It's those unacknowledged feelings that, boy, they, they, they are on us like chains, like... Um, Marley, oh good, I'm bringing in Christmas too. Like Marley from A Christmas Carol, who's yeah. carrying all the chains and the weight of his life. That's what all those unacknowledged feelings and emotions and, and sentiments and things are. To acknowledge them is to, is to free yourself of the chains and the burdens, do you know? And, and allow yourself to start feeling free enough to move into another way and into another being, you know? Yes, so that, that's what I, that's the way I feel about it. Yeah. 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 It that, reminds me, that, there's, there's a Buddhist teacher that I follow. His name's um, Yongi, Min, Yongi Minjir Rinpoche. Mm. He's this young Buddhist monk that is just so brilliant mm -hmm. because he, he speaks to us. Like he takes these very esoteric Tibetan Buddhist principles and he makes them like really digestible for um, us, just West yeah, Western yeah, people. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. And he was talking about acceptance and he's like, we have to, we have to find acceptance for all of our emotions. And, you know, initially that, because I've 
been studying Buddhism for quite a long time, the acceptance thing was always kind of a hard thing. And going back to our comment earlier, acceptance does not mean approval. Acceptance does not mean absorption. It just means recognizing it and yeah. accepting that fully that it's present. And it's amazing, Yurish, like ever since I heard him talk about that in his one book, that's if if I catch myself, because like I said, it can definitely turn into a spiral. If I catch myself in that space of, okay, it's getting heavy. If I can catch myself and I can go to it and say, okay, feel it. Like just truly feel it. Like feel yeah. that acceptance of, yeah. yeah, I feel it in there. Like other people in the world have experienced this too. Yeah. And just be present to it for a minute. It's amazing how it shifts. It is really incredible, but it, it's, it's an interesting concept to me. If I may. And I think Please. this is so relevant and thank you so much for sharing that. And actually, while I'm talking, if you could do us all a favor and type into the chat, the name of that Buddhist monk so that we can yeah. all access that resource, please. Thank you. All yeah. right, please. That's number one. Um, and do you know, in that moment, of that of that acceptance and i love what you just said and i'm, I'm zeroing on a one particular piece because it's a thing that we ignore when you said other people have felt this way so much of our of and again i'll keep it in the eye if this speaks to anybody please let me know in the, for me so much of the frustration is that you feel that this moment is unique to you Hmm. You are struggling through this situation all by yourself. And this is my cross to bear alone on this. It's freaking not. Whatever you're going through, sadly, and I do say this sadly, to some extent, um, somebody else is too. Yes. And in knowing that you're not the only one having this experience, even that in and of itself can give you a little bit of strength to push through because if other people have experienced it, Andrew, get this, if other people have experienced it, other people have conquered it. Yeah. And other people have conquered it. Why not me? Now I can start moving, but it all starts with that initial point of when you stopped and you were like, let me feel this because without that, everything we just discussed after cannot take place. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of like you said, you know, to um, how was Oscar's point, it, if you don't stop and acknowledge it and you don't find some acceptance with it, it doesn't go away. No, it just keeps it. building up and walking right behind you. I'm still here. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm still here. Hey, I'm still hey, here. Bigger. And then finally it's. Yeah, it gets oh. bigger. It like starts as like some little cat that's like tapping on your shoulder. Keep waiting. It's like a gigantic Tyrannosaurus Rex behind you at a certain point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Jurassic Park, the thing chasing the Jeep. It turns into that. You know? And, and <laughs> right? I told you guys his stories. <laughs> I love them. Right? You know? And it's so important because actually that's the recipe for burnout. Also worth noting, you know? And that's something that's very real in our industry and quite frankly in our world. That's that whole thing, rise and grind. You know, that's become a badge of honor that you're grinding yourself to exhaustion. I work 20 hours, like, okay, you know, why, why? You know what I mean? It's like, did you say hi to your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your, I don't even, your cat, I don't even care. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. cause that's all relevant too, you know? And, and to honor that and, um, and to know that there's balance, you know, and we've been shown it and we've been, uh, we've been forced to accept that, you know, is there is balance and we're, being made to institute it, to be honest with you, all of us. That's the invitation we're all being given. Yeah. You know, and we've seen a little bit of the of of the other side that we need to balance what we've been drowning in before. And again, maybe that's just me, but I know I was drowning in it. You know, and service is still important. And I still want to serve every single person out there that I can. I, I want to share my message that anything is possible, all of those things, you know, um, and I also want to make sure that I have a barbecue with my parents and my girlfriend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And there should be a world where I could do both. You dig? It there is one. Yeah. No. 
Yeah. You know, for sure, man, for sure. So um, your ish, I know you have definitely piqued some interest. Um, one thing I'd love for you to kind of shout out is the thing that you do with Carlo every you know, Thursday. Oh my God. Testimony Thursday. Actually, Carlo and I are up tomorrow. Uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, um, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Carlo's IG uh, Instagram handle on his channel um, at Lit From Within. At Just Lit put it into the From chat. Within. Yeah, abs- thank you so much, brother. And we do that every Thursday, you know. And again, to be honest with you, again, get from the pandemic. We never did that. How great. You know, I get to connect with him on that and we get to connect with other people again. So, yes, absolutely. That is a really uh, something that we're really treasuring and we're really having a great time connecting with everybody out there and having those kind of conversations. those testimony type of conversations. Absolutely. It's a blast because like these two side by side, there's such big energies and it, it is so much fun to watch. So definitely tune in. And then at your reach is your Instagram. Absolutely. At Yurish is my Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, my website, please check it out, is uh, yurishstyle.com, uh, www.yurishstyle.com. Um, a lot of education on it, a lot of uh, inspirational stuff. I've got resource pages with books that have changed my life. I just came out with a haircutting tutorial bundle as well that's available. Mm-hmm. Shot it during COVID. Gift of the pandemic, right? So there's that. Um, and, uh, that's something that I will definitely be expanding and growing on in 2021. It's like, I was able to lay the foundation during this year because of the time that I was given, you know, definitely. And two, I just wanted to ask too, like, what, what are some of the offerings that you're putting out there right now that people can continue to connect with you? Is there classes that you're doing digitally or anything like that, that we wouldn't want to know about? No, thank you so much, Andrew. Right now, the main thing that I'm offering for everybody to get into is that COVID-19 collection. I'm calling it the COVID collection. Um, It's a bundle of four full haircutting tutorials over two hours of haircutting education. Um, So that's the main thing that I'm focusing on right now. And um, look for 2021, because the thing that I always do is I always try and share uh, short videos on my Instagram, at Yurish. So you can always see stuff on my Instagram, on my uh, IGTV channel. I have mm-hmm. tons of stuff on it. Uh, tons of videos also on my um, Yurish style website too, um, as well. There's going to be, there's going to be uh, full fringes, everything fringes. I cut four different types of fringes on there. That's actually going to be a free offering. It should be popping actually in the next week or in the next week, actually. Um, and 2021, I'm really going to be working a lot on um, more facilitation training stuff Sweet. Uh, and, and um, more business and personal development videos. And I'm seeing those as you'll see clips of them on my IGTV channel. A lot of them I'll just put out there full view so you can peep the whole thing, you know, because that's just the way I roll and the way I want to serve the community. And, uh, and, I, and, and some of them will be on my website, but I'll always be directing everybody. Um, through my Instagram channel, my Instagram at Yurish to everything that's popping. But right yeah. now, tutorial bundle, look out for that everything fringes tutorial. It's pretty, it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. 40 minutes for fringes. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, totally. So thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you for bringing that back into my consciousness, man. Thank you. It's it's our pleasure. And how, how would you feel about coming back uh, early next year for an actual Mannequin Monday or Transformation Tuesday, actually doing some haircutting for us? I would be hurt if you didn't invite me. No, I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. You know what? I, I'm just playing, Andrew. But in the real, are you kidding me? It would be my absolute honor and privilege to join you for some of that part of what I do. Because uh, I've been doing that for over 20 years, 15 years. Uh, uh, Wow. Yeah. Director of education, director of academies. And I would be more than happy and privileged to join you all in that type of an adventure and that type of artistry too, brother. Definitely. All you ever got to do is ask me, Andrew. I'll be there. Well, I'm expecting an email. (laughs) (laughs) I'm looking. You know, I got you. All right, Yurish, thank you so much. Um, Hang out backstage just for one second. I'm going to kind of close things up with everyone. Um, Please type in the chat. Thank you, Yurish. Show him some love. And man, from all of us here at Sam, um, we just so appreciate the time that you took today and to share this really incredibly valuable stuff with with our community. And um, I hope you all will, will definitely reach out and connect with Yurish. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone who took their time to join us this evening. I can't tell you how much it means to me. And thank you, Andrew, for having me. You're amazing, man. Definitely, brother. Thank you. All right. I don't know about you guys, but I am completely inspired. And um, before you run off, just want to remind you guys, if you're looking for some hands-on ed education, you can still do that digitally. December 6th, uh, 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern. You can register at redkinpro.com backslash education. This is actually a hands-on virtual class with Sam. Ruth Roche is involved. I think there, I'm forgetting who else is involved. But you also will get entered to win a $500 share package, which is very cool. And please, please, please join us this coming Monday, December 7th. We're doing a fundraising benefit for the PBA Disaster Relief Fund. This is a great fund that specifically, specifically targets our industry. So you know that your money is going to help out fellow hairdressers. And we've got two incredible guests. We got Braden Peltier and Jamie DeGracia joining us. We're just going to cut a bunch of hair. So you definitely want to join us for that. And I just got to mention this because it's good deals. If you're still looking for tools, we do have Cyber Monday deals going through um, December 4th. So if you still need to stock up, we got that going for you. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you Monday for The Show Must Go On. And um, we'll see you all next week for more education. Take care. <laughs>